There's team doctor Dr. Don Knapp. He might be the busiest guy other than this guy. This is Ed Thompson, the head trainer here at SIU Pipe. Those two guys were the busiest guys in the Southern Illinois program in the first half, stitching up both Kent Williams and Roland Roberts. Well, Creighton found the key to getting uh, Southern Illinois out of the games. <laughs> Put Kent Williams and Roland Roberts, send them into the locker room. How about Creighton, though? First half, great intensity, ran their defense to perfection, throwing a lot of different looks at Southern Illinois. And with Kent Williams out of the game, they just went zone. Now, if you're an SIU fan watching this, this is a, almost the scenario that it was in Omaha. Double-digit lead at halftime for Creighton, but SIU rallied in that game. The Salukis will try to do the same tonight. We'd like to say hello to the Creighton fans watching tonight at Polly's in Omaha. Big Blue Jay watch party there. But Creighton has had trouble finishing games. Let's be honest about it, Chris. And no question, had some double-digit leads that they've given up. Let Wichita State back in the game Sunday, although Wichita State had a little bit to say about that as well. Specifically, Randy Burns. See if SIU can crank up the defensive heat. They did on the first possession. Williams has no field goals in the game. He's frustrated. McKinney, one-on-one, -on -one, has drawn a foul on Kent Williams. You know, Tyler McKinney will sneak up on you a little bit. Kent Williams established position inside. Only two points today. Look for him to get going here in the second half. But he thought Tyler McKinney was going to go right into him. He tried to set up for the charge. But McKinney a little sneaky there. Snuck around him. Got to the point where he got Williams up in the air for the foul. McKinney out of suburban Des Moines, Urbandale. Produced several athletes at the Division I level. Mr. Basketball in Iowa in some circles, 70% at the line and missed both of those. He hit two big ones against Wichita State on Sunday late. Let's see if Southern Illinois can get the ball inside. Dearman was effective early in the first half. Roberts can't get the stick back. And a foul on Roberts trying to get it back. Well, you know, the problem, a good look inside for Bruce Weber in Southern Illinois, throwing the ball inside to Jermaine Dearman. But, you know, your big guy's got to be smart enough to realize as well, when you catch the ball inside, if you're double teamed, somebody else has got to be open. Just because the plan is to get the ball inside doesn't mean you have to shoot it. Get the inside touch, pull the defense, and then kick it back out on the outside. Excellent point. We saw Dearman in that same situation in the first half have Williams wide open and trying to crank it up over two Blue Jay defenders. Brody Darren. Nice man. I'll tell you what really helps out Creighton offensively, Mitch, is you got Marcus Belcher at 6'2, actually maybe 6'1, trying to guard Kyle Corver out on the perimeter. Kyle Corver can just stand there and look over the top and make the pass wherever he wants to. Roberts able to get it pushed down and gets the foul. Roberts has a chance for a three-point play. Well, not good news for Creighton getting the ball inside to Roland Roberts gets Brody Darren another foul. That's three for him. He's going to sit down now. Joe Dabbert had a good first half. Look at the position that Roland Roberts catches it, and that's where he's got to have the ball. He's got to get the ball in close to the glass, be able to use that size and jumping ability to power it through to the glass. First three years of eligibility at Virginia Tech. In fact, he was the first freshman in 20 years to lead Virginia Tech in scoring. How about that, 1,100 points at Virginia Tech. You don't generally see a guy that successful at a school and leave after three years. Harrison with the steal, and now SIU energized. Stetson Harrison, the freshman that played at Belleville East High School near St. Louis, and SIU trying to get this crowd revved up. Eight-point lead for Craig. Quick shot, House, and he scores on the spinner. Not the possession they <laughs> one No, I, I don't think so. I think it was one of those, uh, don't shoot. Well, okay, we'll take it. Larry House has had a couple of those possessions, actually, where he's taken it right down the floor, gone one on four, but he's been able to get the shot to fall. Followed by Harrison after a blocked shot. And the freshman trying to lead him here for the Salukis. Now, well, Harrison's a guy that Southern Illinois really likes. Lefty, smooth, athletic player. Gives him a great defender, but I think some toughness for the Southern Illinois team as well. Jump stop, House big in the lane. 
Well, he loves that jump stop. will just power to the basket, make a running leap, and go right over the top. He's one of those guys, when you see that look on his face that he's got right now, getting the basketball. Yeah, and you're not getting it back either. You just realize that, throwing the ball, go to the glass. Lindemann on a breakaway. Williams catches up and has two fouls. House trailing. That time, follow dunk missed by Dabber. Chase down by Lindemann. Uh, Corver, bad decision. He was wide open. Too unselfish, but I'll tell you what. Hard to yell at a kid for being unselfish. Ten-point lead, Crate. SIU trying to get over the hump. Hairston. Yep. How about Snitz and Hairston? He's feeling a little bit. His numbers on the year aren't that good from the three-point line, but during the Missouri Valley play, he's shooting 46 percent. For the year, 36 percent. Timeout, Creighton. 16-10 left to go in the game. Creighton's lead has been sliced. There's seven points, and it's been Stetson Hairston. Seven points here for Southern Illinois in less than four minutes. And we'll take a break with the freshman Harrison trying to get the Salukis back in the game. No school in Valley history since the Valley started to sponsor a women's athletic competition has won the regular season title, men's and women's, in the same season. Creighton is threatening to do that. Their women lead the league, so do their men, and right now Creighton leads by seven. If they win tonight, they win the regular season. Although Southern Illinois trying to get things stoked up here. Now Creighton's really come out with a great intensity, though, haven't they? They smelled the chance to clinch it on their own. You're right, Southern Illinois now with Kent Williams and Roland Roberts back in the lineup. But done a nice job here in the second half, although Roland Roberts is sitting at the moment. Stetson Harrison has been huge. Corver on the back got out of bounds. Last touch by Willis of the Salukis. And now we have an official timeout whistle. 15.49 left to go in the game. The Salukis trying to rally on their home floor. Great lead, Southern Illinois. 30 9 to 32, 15 49 left to go in the game. A reminder, Valley fans, next time you travel, stay at a Durian Hotel. There's more than 100 Durian Hotels in 16 states across the U.S. Call toll free 1 800 325 0096 and ask for the special Valley rate. Durian, the official hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference. And McKinney has drawn a Saluki foul going to the basket. From the second personal foul, that's the third team foul on Southern Illinois. Aaron Brooks called for the foul, his second. Creighton trying to work the ball inside to Kyle Forber and Brody Darren. Tyler McKinney just went with the flow. Didn't really have a good look for the big guys inside, so he just kept on going. You know, Southern Illinois has let Creighton off the hook so many times defensively here tonight. Had them in a position where they wanted them offensively, but then fouled and put Creighton at the free throw line. McKinney has really been a fine for Creighton. When you lose Ryan Sears, a guy that's your point guard for four years and one of the top players in Valley history. And they kind of started to do it by committee, but then McKinney stepped in 13 games ago as a starter, and it's really changed the team. Yeah, 12 and 1 as a starter, not bad for Tyler McKinney. One of those uh, he's immediately responsible for, that driving layup with 0.4 seconds left to go Sunday against Wichita State. Some defense here by Creighton. The only loss to SIU in Omaha in that span. Hairston, he's been the man in the second half for the Salukis. Well, obviously a guy that Dana Altman and his staff told his players about when they went zone defense. You've got to know where Hairston's at right now. He's hot, but Mike Grimes got stuck on a pick inside. And Carver tried to go weak side against the double team and throws it to the Creighton bench. Point press here by Creighton. Willis. Hairston wants the basketball. Brooks, Curley. Dearman. Offensive board for Brooks. Now yeah, Dearman, he's taking some shots. I don't think he's in position. He's catching the ball, and instead of passing it back out and getting repositioned, 
He's taking a shot that I don't think that he's really committed to. Oh, oh follow dunk by Sylvester Willis. Look out. That'll get him barking here in Little Egypt. Four-point game. It was a 13-point lead. Corver from NBA oh, range oh, drains at three. And now a steal by the Blue Jays by Taylor, and then he flings one up there that goes back to the Salukis. Well, not a bad shot, one on four. <laughs> Actually, though, in all fairness, Terrell Taylor, he's been hitting that shot. Thought he'd get him off guard. How deep was Corver's three, Pipe? Was it half court? Pretty, Pretty close. close. When the car, at least. Say what, Kyle Corver can shoot from any distance when he's shooting a, a set shot. You know, Southern Illinois was not getting up on him. And now an offensive foul, J.D. Collins. Kent Williams got shoved oh, to the floor. Blue Jays 22, Michael Lindeman. Michael Lindeman is called for the foul. Team foul on the Blue Jays. And that foul was committed about 20 feet from where the basketball was located. Creighton going to do a little face guard full court pressure here against Southern Illinois. Good fast team on the floor again for them. Three guards. And fall back, pick up man. Two best teams in the Valley here in a shootout. This is off freight. Oh, no, it's off Southern Illinois. Is Caro got his hand in the passing lane, but they're going to say Belcher touched it last. Bruce Weber didn't like the call. You can't be lackadaisical against Creighton with your passes. And Southern Illinois now, it's about five times where they've just been in a position where they've turned the ball over, not trying to make something happen at the basket. Corver almost walked with it. Seven point lead for the Blue Jays. This how you cut it to four. to shoot. Foul blows by Belcher. Blocked by Roberts. Great job by Roberts coming from about eight feet for that block. Explosive move by DeAnthony Bowden cutting right through the glass. He thought he had it free. Bowie Roberts covered up by Darren who's playing with three fouls. Williams floats one up there. Not there. Creighton's defense right now just frenzied out there. Southern having a tough time getting a good look. Taylor missing the three. Darren's over the back. And that's four fouls on Brody Darren. Good check off by Tyrese Bowie. You know, and after that play, Kyle Corver looking at Terrell Taylor and saying, slow down a little bit. You put a big guy in a position to foul. Early shot coming in the transition. Your big guy not a chance to set up inside. And he picks up his fourth foul trying to get in for the offensive rebound. Now he's got to sit. And really a factor when you're up by seven points. But now Dabbert and Grimes have to pick up the slack inside. Darren immediately came off the bench for Dana Altman after the follow dunk by Willis. Well, they need his size inside. And tell you what, that is going to hurt Creighton. Joe Dabbert has played well for him, but he's not as strong inside as Brody Darren. He's really got his work cut out for him, trying to muscle up with Roland Roberts. 27 and a half minutes elapsed. No field goal makes for Kent Williams. But Brad Korn drills a three. Brad Korn's third three of the evening. Big, big points for Southern Illinois. He had 15 points the last time these two teams met. It was three for six from the three-point line. So he's obviously figured out that he can get out to the perimeter and not be guarded by Creighton. And Roland Roberts has picked up his third foul, trying to sneak in behind the Creighton offense. 11.56 left to go in the game. Brad Korn gets his team within four. Creighton's lead has been sliced to four. 11.56 left to go in the game. Let's check in with our Valley scores from around the league, brought to you by National Car Rental. Well, big games there. Southwest Missouri State up on Bradley. Bradley and Wichita State just fighting right now to try and stay above the seven. Bradley is down, I think, seventh or eighth in the league, but Wichita State needs that win against Illinois State at home. Illinois State has been hot pipe. They've won three in a row, and they have been tough. And rallying into Tom Richardson last night, Drake upset Indiana State, 62-60 in Terre Haute, and a controversial finish 
A hot dog was thrown on the floor, and a technical foul was called in that game, allowing Greg to get free throws to win. The league, again, the supervisor of official, officials, Jim Bain, said it was an inappropriate decision. The other game last night, Evansville won at Northern Iowa. Foul on Brad Korn of Southern Illinois. Three fouls now on Brad Korn, and he has been a great offensive weapon for Southern Illinois off the bench. Matches up well with Korver as well. Southern Illinois showing great fight here in the second half. Look how far out that Southern Illinois defense is right now without Brody Darren inside, anchoring the paint for great. Really able to push out on the floor, not worried about Dabbert inside. Baylor floats one up there. Touched it last, trying to chase a miss. And SIU will try to make this a one possession deficit. We haven't heard much from Kent Williams for Southern Illinois, but I got this sneaky suspicion we're going to hear from him a little bit more before this game's out. Born against the trap, rescued by Belcher. SIU undefeated at home, 11-0, the last time they were undefeated at home, the 92-93 season. Under Rich Heron, Korn to the basket, hacked by Caro. And Korn hits the deck hard. I think Creighton has established that you're not coming in the paint today and getting out unscathed. Brad Korn putting the ball out on the floor. Kyle Korver rushing at him because he's hit three threes, and he's trying to keep him from doing that. Oh, I hope you don't lip read at home. He said, please don't do that to me again, Joe. Korn was not happy after the last time out. He was kind of doing the stare down. In a physical battle, both these teams play tough, tough basketball. Dane Altman, no question that that's what his team anchors themselves on is tough physical defense and ob obviously Bruce Weber with his Purdue heritage that's all about a physical brand of basketball again SIU the worst free throwing team in the valley at just 61 percent and tonight they're six of 13 at the line you know you don't get that weakness exposed when you're blowing teams out but the close games that's when that's going to show house takes a shot he had that jump stop in the lane and he's down Five on four now, Korn missing the shot. Korver's fouling. And now play will be stopped as Larry House is injured. And Kevin Dermer, the very capable trainer of Creighton, will try to deal with the injury to Larry House. Been falling, Larry House going inside, jump stopping. Looks like he took a knee to a knee there going through. Larry House has been effective for Creighton here in the second half. Watch again as he comes through the lane. A lot of contact and bam. I'll tell you what, Mitch, after this play it was over at the other end, Kyle Korver grabbed his teammates and just immediately started yelling at him, saying, we have got to get on the boards. Who's got this guy? Who's got that? He takes over this team, really leads him. Now Larry House out of the game, and they're going to bring Michael Lindemann back. You know, before the season, I had some people in the Valley tell me that when I saw Kyle Korver, I was going to love him, and they're right. This kid is all about winning. He isn't getting a lot of looks today, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't, you know, a lot of shooters just kind of disappear when they're not shooting the ball. Kyle Corver, though, he can play a lot of minutes, as evidenced at Northern Iowa. 24 minutes, no attempts, because they took him out of the game offensively, but he made other plays happen for Creighton. Yeah, specifically nine rebounds, three assists, and three steals in that span. But this has been the Valley's version of Blackhawk down tonight as the championship on the line, specifically for Creighton. Oh, Williams. Williams goes down hard. Breakaway for about. And he misses the layup. Who's going to get it? Southern Illinois is going to get it. And Kent Williams gets up, and he's limping around. He looks like he's been with Mike Tyson. I tell you what, he better put on a full body pad suit because he is getting beat up. Let's take a look here. Gets the nice pick up top. The up and under look passes it, and him and Dabbert just get tangled up. Dabbert gets the two-point takedown there. And then the other end, Bowden going up just loses the handle late and we're going to have bodies on the floor again Williams leaves the lineup that could have been almost that could have been a serious injury it looked like he wrenched his back but it's 44 to 40 we're halfway through the second half again if Creighton wins if you join this leg Creighton wins they win the Valley title in the regular season if SIU wins the race goes to the weekend 
where's the offense going to come from Southern Illinois right now? Brad Korn sitting on the bench. Darren Brooks has not been able to hit a shot. Four on one. Two of 11. And a foul on Southern Illinois underneath. Mark McMullen will make the call. How about Brooks? Two for 11 from the field. Number two, Marcus Belcher. Belcher's third personal foul. You know, at some point, Mitch, you got to pass up that shot and give it to somebody else. Darren Brooks came into the game shooting 43% from three, but he has not had anything fall. And Creighton has done a fantastic job of not allowing the ball inside. When I looked at this game beforehand on paper, I thought Southern Illinois had a huge advantage inside. They have not been able to capitalize that. But that's, you know, no surprise because Dane Altman, one of the things he is best at is taking away strengths of the other team. Has it been the zone that has done it? I know they've played a variety of defenses, but how have they done it? Well, they're pushing the ball out on the perimeter as well. You watch Southern Illinois, when they get started offensively, they're going side to side. They're not getting any movement inside. Well, they're bodying up, not allowing the offense to make cuts to the basket. And then when they're catching the ball for the big men inside, they're in a position they can't score. Eight, ten feet out is not where Roland Roberts and Jermaine Dearman are effective. A near ten count, but broken just in time for Southern Illinois after Corver with a high basket. And now Bowden again speeding to the other end. Another layup missed by Bowden. Three times he's gone to the rack. Three times he's missed in this game. And then he fouls trying to get it back. You know, you bring in an interesting point. Coaches talk a lot how post defense starts on the perimeter, making it tough to make that entry. Easiest thing in the world to, to do is, is get the ball inside if you got no pressure on the passer. Big men absolutely hate that. They're in there fighting for position, and there's so much space in there that you're at a disadvantage. But if you got a guy that's really hawking on the ball, not allowing the pass inside, that, that helps out. It's a two-way, it's a two-man game defending inside the post. 46-40, Crate, and 8-42 left to go in this very physical game. Harrison has been the man, second half for SIU. A pass it. A movement for Southern Illinois. Not a whole lot of it. The ball goes inside. A lot of guys standing and watching. Harrison, what a half. 12 points for Harrison all in the second half. Four point lead for Creighton. Got a roll, Dabbert. Corbin looking for a little pitch and roll. Taylor. Way long there, Corver tips it in. He'll do a million things to beat you. You know, you forget about him because he's standing out there on the perimeter waiting for the shot. And then you think that you don't have to go board. You gotta get a body on him. He has had threes, blocks, tip-ins, assists. He's doing it all again tonight. 48-42, Creighton heading for crunch time. Shade under eight left in the game. Creighton trying to win the championship, leading 48-42 over Southern Illinois. College Hoops fans, you can win tickets to this year's NCAA basketball tournament. Register today at participating St. Louis area Taco Bell restaurants for a chance to win two tickets to the first and second rounds, March 14 and 16, in St. Louis. See Taco Bell stores for details. Good tickets still available for the first and second rounds. Charge by phone by calling 314-421-4400. Expected to be there as the number one seed of the Midwest, Kansas, and then who knows who will be on the other side because you could have a different region actually be in St. Louis to start the tournament. Let's talk about something important. What are you getting me for dinner after this game? <laughs> you just got hungry. <laughs> I got time. hungry, that's right. Dearman cracks one. That was a better look in his range. You know, he caught the ball in a position where he could make something happen. That's the whole key. Able to just take the ball and, and score immediately. When he's got to sit there and think about it, dribble, dribble, bounce, bounce back in his way in, that's when he's been missing. Corver, wide open on a three, delivered by Grimes. Here comes SIU, a chance to cut it to two. Oh, lackadaisical again with the ball, just gets away with it. Darren Brooks, got to be strong with that ball. He had Kent Williams on the wing. He makes one more dribble and then gets through the defense and passes over. He's got Williams on the outside. Lindemann just standing there, giving a little bit of token pressure. Nothing tough. Kent Williams spotted up for the three. But Lindemann pipes like a mosquito. He just keeps showing up. Unless you got a bug light, he's going to come back and bite you. You want to zap him, don't you? Dearman, strong. It's a two-point game. Well, he can put the ball on the floor. He does better when he's at the top of the post, able to see 
where he's going with it. The wing spot with his back to the basket. That's not where his comfort zone is. Can Creighton finish the job? Taylor fouled by Belcher. He thought he got all ball. That's four fouls on Marcus Belcher. Number two, number two, Marcus Belcher. Belcher's fourth personal foul. That's Jermaine Dearman. Catch the ball at the top. He's able to look inside to Roberts. Not seeing anything there. And he's able to just put the ball down on the floor and take it to the basket. Well, this is the first 25, 30 minutes of this game. We saw him catching the ball down on the baseline with his back to the basket. Not where he was comfortable. Well, they come on strong for Southern Illinois this year. Gained a little maturity from last year. Bruce Weber's rewarded him with the starting position. And that is points that they need. Bruce Weber likes the way his team has clawed back into this game. They trailed by 11 at halftime, 33-22. Taylor missing the first free throw. He's 80% at the line for the year. Cash is in there for his seventh point. Hit 28 against Drake a week ago. Smoking home five threes on the road at Des Moines. SIU better against the press. Hairston delivers. Oh, oh, a flush and fill for Roland Roberts. You know what I like about it, Mitch? He just kind of hung up there and looked around a little bit, waiting for everybody to size him up and finished it. A special on flush and fills in Little Egypt tonight. Roberts with eight. Lindemann, the mosquito for three. Oh, just stinging you in the corner. Lindemann. How about this guy? Comes into the game eight threes on the season and none bigger than that one there. He looks like you ought to be playing noon ball with the med students, and then he comes out and gets you seven points. Let's take a look, though, at Roland Roberts. Well, not many touches inside, unfortunately, for Southern Illinois and Roland Roberts, but it's the penetration by Hairston on the baseline and a nice little bounce pass, and uh, Roland Roberts. Watch him hang up in the air. He's going to kind of look around, make sure everybody's out of his way, uh, and finish. Make sure everybody got a good look. Get out of his way. Too much to do every day, then skip that trip to the bank because at AllegiantBank.com, you can handle almost all of your banking online. At AllegiantBank.com, your bank's open 24 hours a day every day. Proud to be the official bank of the Valley. Allegiant Bank, pledged to a better way of banking. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Now you see why I like this league so much. You get a game like this, this intensity level, it's good ball. No question about it. We've seen a couple good ones last few. Everybody's just tightening things up. This one is big for both teams. Creighton wanting to put this thing away and no question marks. McKinney slipping in from behind Hairston. 15 turnovers now by Southern Illinois, and I think about 10 of those had nothing to do with trying to make a play to the basket. Kenny right around Brooks. Blocked by Brooks. Creighton keeps it with 20 to shoot. 5.34 left in the game. And Brody Darren will come in as Creighton will put the ball in play. Underneath their basket, Darren coming in with four fouls. Now let's see how long Brody Darren can last. Joe Dabbert, after that last time out, had to stay on the bench. He was just absolutely exhausted, muscling up inside. Taylor underneath, shut off, forces it. Bad decision, rebound Darren. Taylor now out on Hairston. Hairston. Look at how tough this kid is. Gives this team just toughness after every loose ball goes down on the floor, still gets there. Darren Brooks finally hits a three. Thank goodness he didn't listen to me tell him not to shoot it anymore. Second three of the game for Brooks. It is a one-point game with five to go. You know, the difference, though, there, Mitch, play was going on. They got a, a rebound, an offensive rebound. The defense wasn't set. Darren Brooks able to size it up, spend some time thinking about it, make it happen. Darren Strong blocked from behind by Roland Roberts. And SIU can take the lead. Careful. Brooks, nowhere to go. And the Mosquito loses the ball out of bounds. Linden was handed just enough at midcourt. And both teams now, the frantic pace. You can tell it's championship time because everybody trying to do a little too much right now. That's exactly right. Just a little too much. 
Brooks hits the shot down the last possession, this time taking it inside. And, you know, maybe there is contact. Maybe he had a reason to feel like the foul. But the thing is, he made a bad play there going one on four. And Bruce Weber just calling, begging for a foul. He'll be out here. That's a situation you can't get too high on what you did the last possession. You hit the shot, now get somebody else involved. Loads of time left, 429 left to go in the game. If you just joined us, here's the quick reset. Creighton was up 11 at halftime, led by as much as 13. If Creighton wins the game, they are the Missouri Valley champions for this season. If SIU can win this game and pull it out, then it'll go to the weekend, and Creighton has a tough game Saturday at Bradley. A lot of basketball left. A lot of basketball left here. Four minutes. Are we going home by midnight tonight? Wow. It's been a long one. You knew it was going to be a long one. Just a battle. Every possession. Scratching, clawing, digging, biting. No biting yet. No Mike Tyson around. Southern Illinois has never led in this game, Chris Piper. They have a chance right now. Down one at 422 left in the game. Well, I just got to think Kit Williams is going to come up here at some point. For Southern Illinois and make a big play. No field goals for Williams. Just two points, both at the line. One over the top with a hook. They went right after Brody Darren. Foul. Who's this on? Darren. Pointing at Darren. I don't know where he was at in the play. I thought Tyler McKinney was scrapping. Brody Darren fouls out, and Dana Altman is in disbelief. Brody Darren disqualified at 4.07 left in the game. Now let's watch the battle underneath. Brody Darren, great defense on Roland Roberts. You know he's setting you up for the little jump hook there, but it's the offensive rebound that'll put you in a bad position. And Brody Darren getting called for the slap on the arm. Bad fifth foul for Brody Darren. Watch from the other angle, see if we can get it from this angle, which was the call. But regardless, Mitch, even if Brody Darren doesn't think he fouled, he put himself in a position by being there. Five fouls, you're not going to do anything. Back out, let your other guys take care of the play. You also have to like the way that Bruce Weber went right after him. They got Roberts posted up, and out of their timeout, they're going right to the guts of the Creighton defense. I'd be real surprised right now if you're not going to see Southern Illinois try and pound the ball in the paint every time. I think it's taken about 30 minutes, but Bruce Weber's finally gotten it to his guys. Hey, let's get the ball inside. Great year for the Southern Illinois team. 21 and 6. Dearman with the 1 and 1. Game tied. That's Dearman's 10th point. Jermaine Dearman only a 57% free throw shooter at the line and we've talked about the free throw problems for Southern Illinois. These are big here at the end. lead of the night for the Salukis. Tell you what, yesterday doesn't mean anything right now at the free throw line. Now's the time to step up, start making it. 53-52 Salukis. Four minutes left in the game. SIU extending its defense. Hairston just face guarding Kyle Corver, staying right on him away from the ball, not allowing Kyle Corver any breathing room. Nine to shoot. Lindemann finds Corver. And he hits a three in the corner. What a three by Kyle Corver with a man in his face. We saw it Sunday against Wichita State. You cannot leave him. That time, Hairston thought that Lindemann was going all the way. He was going in to rebound. You got to stay on Corver. If nothing else, box him out 30 feet from the basket. What a robo stud. Just when you think he can't do anything more, he does like three great things to help this team. Now can SIU answer Williams for three and air ball. Underneath, Brooks has it blocked. Joe Dabbert with the block off the bench, the pick fell out. That's great in basketball this year. When you least expect it from somebody, they give it to you. Seven blocks now for the Blue Jays. Corver out of options. And Dabbert again. <laughs> How about that? Joe Dabbert has played about eight minutes in the last two games, and here he's getting huge buckets. Great. You think this team has some mental strength? SIU takes a one-point lead. They come back and get five consecutive points. Brooks. Oh, oh, that that's not the shot. And what happens? Will and Roberts on a takedown. Kyle Corbett. 
I'm wrong. I was wrong. They forgot about the inside again. If I'm not mistaken, Mitch, Brody Darren's sitting on the bench right now. Yeah, he just fell out. Okay. Right. I, it, you know, I'm not very smart. I need you to walk me through things sometimes. No, that's what Bruce Weber's probably thinking, along with Matt Painter, Rodney Watson, and that great staff he's got. But I know that was priority A, B, C, and D. And very few times than I really have they been able to pound it inside. 57 53 Creighton, 231 left, but yeah, still plenty of time. And here's where the Salukis have to be careful not to lay down. They fought so hard coming back and getting actual lead that there's still a lot of basketball left to play. Well, you know, this is a time in a game where Southern can just throw out everything and just attack defensively, use their athleticism against Creighton. I think Creighton's a kind of team that is susceptible to the turnover against pressure. And I think Southern Illinois has got to be aware of that and play good defense without fouling. A lot of time left. A lot of possessions left. This game's, this game's a long way away. Barber's going to get one and one here. My free meal from you is still at least another hour away. Hey, it's Little Egypt. There's stuff open late. <laughs> Forver gets a one and one. I've seen him do a lot of impressive things, but this night right now is taking the cake because he's done it when it's hard. It's all about toughness. You got to be tough. You got to step up. And you watch Kyle Corver on every dead ball. He is coaching out on the floor. He is exhorting his teammates to play tough, hard basketball. And that look on his face, he's always about business. Third in the Valley and free throw shooting at 87%. Kyle Corver has registered his 20th point. SIU at one point, led by one, Creighton. Back in Carmondale, Illinois. Let's go to our game reset brought to you by Ralston Purina of Checkerboard Square. Well, two and a half minutes, only down by two possessions, maybe three. So a lot of time left in this game right now. Important for Creighton to keep that clock rolling. And for Southern Illinois, I'd pound that ball right inside. If Creighton collapses, then you get the ball back outside to Williams for a look at the basket. Or more importantly, maybe even Hairston. Hairston's been the guy here tonight for Southern Illinois. Williams again held at just two points. And full court pressure here by Creighton. Runs time off the clock. And they'll get back quickly in their defense. And match up man out of it, it looks like. Nope, going to stay zone. They'll match up in the zone. Dearman goes right after Dabbert. He'll get free throws. Perfect. That's exactly what Southern Illinois wants to do. Throw the ball inside. Get to the line. Well, maybe. You know, last part of that, maybe. If we can make the free throws, Southern Illinois second, that's a great strategy because you stop the clock and get a chance to put a couple points on the board. But I'll tell you what, I'm rolling Roberts right now. I am pounding this offensive glass. Dearman, 57% for the year at the line, but tonight he's 4 of 4. And as a freshman, he was 43%. Maybe it's this one that will allow SIU to set up some pressure. 59-54 Creighton, 2.07 left in the game. There you go. Corbett touched it last. Tell you what, those are the mistakes that'll kill you. And Hairston, again, the man, just snuck around Kyle Corbett. SIU crowd starting to get on Corbett, but that's not going to bother him much. He likes that. Williams. By Dabbert, a oh. potential four point play. Williams with a kick for a four point play. Fitting for Kit Williams to end up on his backside after this play. That's where he's been the whole night. The three, the good ball movement, and Joe Dabbert being required to get out a long ways. Only Kent Williams' fifth point, and he matched up on the right side. He saw Joe Dabbert there. Knew that he'd have a chance to get a little space. Kent Williams, how about this, Mitch? 75 of 80 games in his career, he's been in double figures. Three of the games, though, that he hadn't been in double figures has been this year. That's consistency. I mean, as a freshman, can you believe it? I mean, that's amazing. It really is. 
A four-point play. It's back to a one-point game again. 157 left in the game. 59-58. Great. No need to gamble here for Southern Illinois. Just play a tough defense and then get all over the glass. Creighton right now. Got to be patient offensively. And do the things that brought you here. Don't need somebody stepping up trying to be a hero. 12 to shoot. SIU has had one lead tonight. Six to shoot. Lindemann against Belcher, forcing. Rebound. It comes down to Roberts. SIU can take the lead again. Timeout, Bruce Weber, Southern Third Illinois. It's a 30. And how about the Salukis charging back? A four point play by Williams. They go to Dearman inside and pick up two free throws. Well, Mitch, you know, the tough thing for Creighton in that last possession, Tyler McKinney is the kind of guard that's not going to make a lot of mistakes for you. But when the shot's running down, you've got to have a guy that can beat the pressure like a DeAnthony Bowden at the point. Only problem is you want Tyler McKinney in because he's solid. He's not going to make mistakes, and you want him in on the defensive end. 120 left of the game. Let's announce now Amber and UE players of the game. For the Blue Jays, Kyle Korver, he's been outstanding. And Stetson Harrison, if he doesn't do what he's done in the second half, SIU'd be blown out. Well, Harrison, the freshman, let's forget about the points for Kyle Korver. That's not what he's done for these guys. 20 points, obviously they needed it. But he has been the guy that has got this team going, jumped in some people's faces when they didn't do it right, and just been a tough, tough, solidifying force on the floor for Creighton. Our players of the game, a presentation of Amron UE. 70 seconds left of the game. Williams. Roberts shut off. 15 to shoot. In the lane, Hairston forces one up there, and guess who gets the rebound? And a foul in the backcourt now on Hairston in that. Or is it on Roberts? If it's on Roberts, it's his fifth. Bruce Weber cannot believe it. And what are you doing, Roland Roberts? You're down by one, but you got 57 seconds left, folks. You got a lot of time. I think Roland Roberts has kind of got lost of himself there. And Harrison trying to make something happen in there. Roland Roberts just grabbing it up, and Bruce Weber's like, get away! Get away! No! Oh, can't believe it. That's why you get gray hairs in coaching, Mitch. You see Matt Painter, the old Purdue Boilermaker over there? He's going to jump out there and take uh, Roland, who's pushing away from him. Now Corva, though, has well, that's one and one. And it's going to kill Southern Illinois because Roberts, maybe he's not going to score points for you. He hadn't been that effective, eight points on the evening, but defensively and on the boards. And boards is where you win this game here tonight. And you don't foul this guy. No. But how big is his rebound that he goes up and gets it with Roberts in his face? 21 points for Corva. His line, 7 of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, threes. Six rebounds. Still a one-possession game. Three-point lead for Creighton. You know, the thing you like about Kyle Corver in a situation like this, he knows if it's going to get done, he has to do it, and he wants that challenge. SIU down three. 22-second differential game clock shot clock. Williams try to get free. McKinney on him. Oh, Dearman oh. inside. Dearman. Nice move by Jermaine Dearman to clear out by Southern Illinois. And I'll tell you what, Creighton snuck away with one there because Mike Grimes had a hold of Dearman inside on this spin move. Watch the post up inside. Takes it baseline, spins back. Grimes getting late help from Kyle Corver on the outside. And immediately the call of the timeout by Bruce Weber and staff on the sidelines set up their defense down by one 38 seconds left. Southern has one full timeout remaining and that's it 50 or 38 seconds left in the game again if Creighton wins with the Valley Champions but Southern Illinois has fought back from being down as many as 13 in the second half and now we'll have a chance to defend Creighton on the inbounds play but there's only three seconds now they got 38.7 left to go in the game specifically. So SIU now has to look for a steal, perhaps. They can't allow the clock to run all the way down. I wouldn't think he's only going to have four seconds. Left. I don't think you foul in a situation like this, Mitch. I really don't. You put the pressure on Creighton to be able to handle the ball against your defense. You'll defend the entire shot clock. That's what I do. 
wouldn't stand around and let him just trap him if possible. And McKinney nearly walks with it, running, dribbling into a trap, and Williams fouls. Williams third personal foul. That's yeah, you gamble for the steal. You don't get it. You get the foul. A lot of different ways to do it. And right now, Bruce Weber in Southern Illinois decided he did not want to leave it in Creighton's hands to make the mistake. They'll go ahead and put him at the line. Hope they can get something offensive. McKinney's only two for four tonight at the line, but hits that one for his third point. All of his points have come at the line. Well, I'll tell you what, he is nails at the end. Had two free throws against Indiana State with 6.8 seconds left. Had a couple free throws Sunday against Wichita State with under 20 seconds. Again, another word that we've used all night with Creighton, toughness. Like that that I love that word. But both of these teams are tough. That's why, they, that's why they're at the top of the league. Now, Korn is in for SIU to give him another three-point shooter because even if this free throw goes down, it's just a three-point margin. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Nope, SIU gets it off Lindem. Lucky there, Jermaine Dearman, the big man, almost let that one get away to Lindemann. And again, Creighton going to throw a little pressure on you. Keep your offense out of rhythm. Half minute left. Creighton by two. Here we go. I love it. Creighton just comes at you. They don't want to allow you to dictate. They want to dictate things defensively. And Bruce Weber will call a timeout. To set up his play here. 21 seconds left to go. And two ties at a three would give SIU the lead. Let's go back and look at the standings. And it's pretty clear. Creighton wins. Three game lead with two to play. I can figure that one out, Mitch. That means they clinch. <laughs> and Southern Illinois knows it and knows that if they win today, Creighton still has to go to Bradley, a place that Dana Altman has never won. So they have a shot here as well. A lot of work to be done. Again, SIU undefeated this season at home. First time since 92-93, and that includes a win over the Indiana Hoosiers in this building. SIU with a favorable finish. We have them on Valley Television Saturday afternoon late against Indiana State, and then they finish at home with Bradley. Well, if you're Southern Illinois right now, I think you, you're down by two. You've got to throw the ball inside. If the defense collapse on you, you've got to be smart enough to kick it back outside to Harrison and Williams spotting up, but that ball has got to go inside. Both teams are in the double bonus. The next foul on Creighton will put SIU in the double bonus. The Blue Jays already there. And Brody Darren fouling out three and a half minutes ago. Arguably the best post defender the Blue Jays have. Well, Dana Altman, Creighton team, he's got to be talking about rebounding right now. It's always the second shot that hurts you. And without either big man on the floor for Creighton, Joe Dabbert and Brody Darren sitting on the bench and Mike Grimes. It's up to Michael Lindemann and Kyle Korver. Go get it. Matt Painter yelling at a matchup here. They got Lindemann in the game for Creighton, and it looks like they'll try to get a matchup against him. As you see, Matt Painter on the bench area. Anthony Bowden with speed on Kent Williams. Switch it up. Terrell Taylor switches on the pick. Williams for three for the lead. Oh, yeah! good! 16 seconds left to go in the game. Williams has nine. Creighton down one, 15 seconds left to go in the game. Good the whole way. When it left his hand, they sent a high pick for him, and Terrell Taylor went over the top of the pick rather than chasing him. When you're playing a shooter on the outside, you got to chase him. The worst thing you could happen in that situation is Kent Williams puts the ball on the floor and takes it to the basket. When you flare out over the top, you're giving up the jump. Let's go now with 63-62, SIU with a one-point lead. And that is our Rawlings play of the game. Let's take a look at it again as Kent Williams gives SIU the lead on his second field goal in the last two minutes. See Terrell Taylor goes over the top and Corver comes out a little bit late. Terrell Taylor, he's right on him. He's got to stay down with him. He don't leave a shooter open. And Kent Williams makes him pay. Hadn't had a great night offensively, but we said we were going to hear from him at some point. Bruce Weber saying, get back, get back. Immediate timeout by Creighton. How about these two teams, Padna? I think they both ought to get in the tournament. If somebody's watching this game, 
This game tells you why both of these teams ought to be in the NCAA tournament. Both have very good records. 18 and 6 and 21 and 6 respectively. The RPI is where the discussion gets a little dicey. But both of these teams would be great representatives in the big show. No question about it. They've played tough games. You look at Southern Illinois. They've beaten Illinois, or actually they lost Illinois by two, or did they beat them? No, they lost. They two. lost by two. They had a mean, shot at beating. They had a shot at beating them. They beat Indiana. So, I mean, they've had some quality wins. And you got to, you know, sometimes if your conference RPI br brings you down a little bit, you got to throw that out the window. Conferences are always tough. A little change in strategy tonight from Sunday for Dane Altman. Sunday, they elected not to call a timeout and immediately went down the floor. Today, they call a timeout to set up their offense. Ten seconds left. It's in McKinney's hands. McKinney again to the rack. Blocked by Dearman. McKinney got the layup Sunday against Wichita State. Tonight, Jermaine Dearman changes the shot with just one second left to go in the game. They tried to do the same thing they did on Sunday, but this time SIU is late. Well, the difference here tonight is Creighton down by one. Had to have a shot. Sunday they were even, and so they could try and make something happen. Watch Tyler McKinney spreading the floor out. Likes to put the ball down on his left, run a, throw a little runner with his left hand, but the great help side defense with Jermaine Dearman. You're a big man for Creighton inside. You gotta be boxing those guys out. Allow your guard to get to the basket. You know, good no call coming through there. A lot of contact on that, but you don't want to allow the officials to decide a game with one second left. And now the officials have gone to the monitor to see how much actual time should be on the clock as Dana Altman's going to bring his team over. But I want to bring up something here. With Brody Darren fouling out at the 407 mark of the game, it took the inside option away really from Creighton on their last play opportunity. Well, and, and it took it away on the last play opportunity. Also took it away for them defensively on the other end where they were giving up some points on the inside. But you're right, Brody Darren's a guy that can create space for you inside. You've got to guard him. Southern Illinois not concerned about the inside game of Creighton that last possession. Great help side defense, though, for Jermaine Dearman. Wichita State was hoping for a little more weak side defense on Sunday. Did not get it. Southern Illinois here tonight did. You see Jack Watkins, assistant commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference, and one of the great timeout coordinators in the country. He's worked final fours all over the place, working with J.D. Collins and Mark McMullen as they watch the monitor to actually put the correct amount of time on the clock. Bruce Weber's over there lobbying, too. I'm not sure his opinion counts at this point. Well, they're looking at when the possession came and the foul called. With the officials here doing an excellent job, they can use the replay to get it right. And that's the main thing in this situation is to get it right. And a little change in rules in the last couple of years, allowing the technology to come in and make sure that things go right. Nothing worse than going home wondering if it was right or wrong. Dana Altman's team at a double-digit lead, 11 points at halftime. And if they lose this game, that's when we'll really see. We talk about their toughness. But they can still win it outright, but they have to go to Bradley to do it. But you're talking about a quick recovery time to try to put this game behind you and try to go to Carver and win. And in a place where you don't have good history either. And Bradley is the good a defensive team as you're going to see in the Valley. They will make that game down and dirty and come right at Creighton. Not they, dirty as far as play, but I mean just a physical brand of defensive battle. They've officially put 2.2 seconds on the clock. 2.2 seconds. And Brooks is at the line to shoot two shots. Again, even with both of these free throw makes, it would be a one possession game, but with 2.2 seconds, Creighton would have to go 90 feet. Well, they do have Kyle Clark. They might only have to go 45. If anybody in the country could figure this out, it would be him. Brooks with the free throw make. He's got nine. How about Kent Williams? Doesn't score a field goal until the last 10 minutes, and he hits two huge threes. Got them both. Timeout, great. Brooks hit them both. Great needs a three to tie. What a game this has been in Carbondale.
you know the whole